schools have been closed for months and it's unlikely that they'll be fully open before Rosh Hashanah. But to be denied a chance to be in shul for the Yamim Noraim, the High Holy Days, is really, really tough. Which means that we approach this with very heavy hearts. <laughs> Rabbi Lionel Rosenfeld of the Western Marble Arch Synagogue in London decided to do something to help quite simply to make available filmed highlights of the Rosh Hashanah Musaf service, accompanied by his small choir, many of whom have been singing with him for more than 20 years, and several of whom are now living abroad. This film features pieces to give people a real taste of Rosh Hashanah, of saying the familiar prayers and singing the familiar tunes, in spite of all the difficulties of 2020. the blessing introducing the Rosh Hashanah evening service. Variations of this traditional and beautiful High Holy Day melody are sung in Ashkenazi synagogues all over the world. I'm Lionel Rosenfeld. As well as being the community rabbi, I have the honor to lead services as the Chazan. And now, Tik'u b'chodesh shofar. Sound the shofar on our festival day. Contrast the traditional melody of Baruch Hu with this modern setting of the verses which precede the Rosh Hashanah evening Amida. Oh, 
Torah commands us to hear the sound of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. When the first day falls on Shabbat, the shofar is blown only on the second day. The custom is to blow 100 blasts on each of the two days. Rabbi Lord Sachs, in his commentary on the Machsa, says, the shofar is a cry from earth to heaven, from us to God. It represents Jewish faithfulness and sacrifice. For millennia, Jews suffered for their faith, yet for the most part, they did not abandon it. It got down. It got down. It got down. It got down.
יתברך, יתברך, וישתבח, ישתבח, ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא, ויתהדר, יתהדר, ויתעלה, יתעלה, ויתעלה, just one of the central prayers, piyutim, pieces of poetry on the Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur davening. It is also, in a sense, a key to the days themselves. The sofer, God is in the seat of judgment. The angels are terrified at what is going to take place. You can hear in the background a kind of ticking clock reminding us how precious time is and how important it is to pray to be written in the book of life. כי אתה אלוקינו מלך, ונתנתו עוקף. ונתנתו עוקף, ונתנתו עוקף, קדושה. Who knows? 
את הערים, ותספור ותמנה ותבכות נפש כל ותבכות נפש כל חי, נפש כל חי. ותבכות נפש כל חי, נפש כל חי. ותח תוך קצרם לכל בריא. לכל לבריאה, ותכתוב, ותכתוב, את גזר, את גזר, דינה. בראש השנה יקטבון ויום צום כיפור יחטמון כמה כמה יעבורון וכמה יברעון מי יחיה ומי ימות איי 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 ימין וקיצור ומי לא וקיצור מי במים ומי איי 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 מי בחרב ומי בחיה בראש השנה יקטבון ויום צום כיפור יחטמון כמה כמה יעבורון וכמה יברעון מי ידרנו Oh, my God. 
Thank <laughs> you. אם ישוב, מיד תקבלו. אמת. 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 כי אתה הוא יוצרו. ואתה יודע יצרום, כי הם בשר ודם, כי הם בשר, בשר ודם. אתה מיסודו Man is like a fleeting shadow Like a passing cloud, like a breath of wind Like whirling dust Like a dream that slips away That atmospheric arrangement, true to the meaning of the words, concludes some beautiful modern compositions for the prayers which focus on the major themes of Rosh Hashanah. And now that we've closed the ark, we return to the traditional melodies of Aseilama and Shemecha, Kedusha, and the prayers that follow. Aseilama.
מעלי עולם, משערתיו שואלים זה לזה, איי, מקום גבודו ליומתם ברוך יום רחמים ויחון עם המאחדים שמו ערב הבוקר בכל יום תמיד פעמיים ביחבה שמה אומרים? שמה ישראל אדוני אלוהינו אדוני אחד שמיענו ברחמה ושנית לעיני כל נכי להיות לכם לאלוהים אדוני, אדוניינו, מה אדיר שעמך בכל הארץ, והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ, ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד ושמו אחד, ובדברי קודשך כתוב אלי אמור, ימלוך נצחים קדושתך נקדיש ושבחך אלוהינו מפינו לימוש לעולם ועד כי אל המלך גדול וקדוש אתה חמור על מעשיך ותשמח ממעשיך ויאמרו לך חוסך בצדקך עמוסך תוקדש אדון על כל מעשיך כי מקדישך בקדושתך קידשת איי 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 לאי 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 נאה לקדוש פיהם מקדשים ובכן יתקדש עמך אדוני אלוהינו 
על ישראל עמך, ועל ירושלים עירך, ועל עציו משכן כבודך, ועל מלכו בית דוד משיחך, ועל מכונך ואוהביך עליך. או נזכו לנו, אבת איתן אדוננו, ובבין עני יקד, ישבית מדיינינו, ובזכות התם יוציא היום לצדק דיננו, כי קדוש היום לאדוננו, ואין מליץ יום אשר מול מגיד פשע, תגיד ליעקב דבר חוק ומשפט וצדקנו במשפט, המלך המשפט. Now we come to the whole מאמינים and all believe. As Rabbi Lord Sachs says, this is a sustained declaration of faith in divine justice and compassion. Rosh Hashanah, the day of judgment, is the living expression of Judaism's greatest leap of faith, the belief that the world is ruled by justice. We begin with a gentle, traditional melody. V'chol, 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 ma'aminim shehu. And then we up the tempo with a well-known, lively Shlomo Kalabach tune, which wasn't written for the Chol Ma'aminim, but a few years ago, my daughter Yehudit suggested it, and it really works. Ha'ochez v'yad midat mishpat וכל מאמינים שהוא אל אמונה הבוחן ובודק כנזי נסתרות וכל 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 מאמינים שהוא וכל 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 מאמינים שהוא וכל מאמינים שהוא בוחן כליות הגורל ממוות ופודה מישחת וכל מאמינים שהוא גורל החזק הדן יחידי לבעי עולם וכל מאמינים שהוא דיין אמת, היה גוי ויהיה אשר אהיה. וכל המאמינים שהוא היה ווה ויהיה, אבדאי שמו כן תהילתו. וכל מאמינים שאהוב יין בלתו הזוכה למזכירת טובו זיכרונות וכל מאמינים וכל מאמינים זוכה הברית החוטא חיים ליכול חי וכל מאמינים שהוא עונה נחש הפותח לדופקי תשובה וכל מאמינים שהוא רק לרצות השווה ומשווה כהטון וגדול וכל 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 מאמינים שהוא וכל 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 מאמינים שהוא וכל מאמינים שהוא שופט צדק הטעם ומתעממים את המימים וכל 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 מאמינים וכל 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 מאמינים וכל מאמינים שהוא תמיד פועלו
The prayers which follow, beginning with Uvchen Ten Kavod, which we say in every Amida of Rosh Hashanah, ask God to give us confidence and hope in the future and to bring joy to the land of Israel and its capital. Spot the musical reference. Together with the hope in the words of the prayer, V'chol harisha kulach ki ashan that all human evil will fade away like smoke. Uchein etein kavod Hashem liyamecha Tehila lireyecha Vetikva tova ledorashecha Ufitchon eper Lameyacha liyamelach Simecha leyatecha Vesason eleirecha Uzmichat keren Le David avdecha Barichat ner le venishai meshichecha Vimera veyamenu Uvechein et tzadikim yiru vismachu Visharim e yalozu Vahachasidim berina yagilu Violata tikpot spia Vuchol arish ah Kula ki ashao anetich le Ki davir memshelet zadon Min haaretz Ay, 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 V'timloch atah shem levadecho al kol emasecha Bahar tziyon mishkan kvodecha Uvirushalayim ir kodshecha Kakatuv בדברי קודשך, ימלוך השם לעולם, אלוקי עיר ציון לדו ועדו, הללויה. קדוש אתה, ונורא שמך, ואין אלוה מבלעדיך, ככתוב. ויגבה השם צבקות במשפט והגל הקדוש נקדש בצדקה ברוך אתה השם המלך הקדוש עלינו לשבח לאדון הכל Aleinu was written in the third century, specifically for Rosh Hashanah. But for the last 800 years, it has also concluded every service. The second paragraph, penned all those years ago, introduces the famous concept of tikkun olam, repairing the world, something which is needed in every generation. This is one of only six occasions when we kneel in prayer twice on Rosh Hashanah and four times on Yom Kippur. For me, when I sing Aleinu, it's a sublime moment. The ark opens and the congregation joins in with this powerful, haunting melody. <laughs> לריח ניחוח היא של השם. Thank 
כמשפחות האדמה. in the middle of the repetition of the Musa Famida, and I've chosen some additional verses ending with the final blessing of the section known as Zichronot, Remembrances, which leads to the second of the three sets of ten shofar blasts during Musaf. Following the shofar, we sing Hayom Harat Olam. This day is the birth of the world. We've all grown up with this tune, sung all over the Anglo-Jewish world since Victorian times. ומושל בגויים ונאמה, ההשם מלך גאות לבש, לבש השם בו זה התאזר, אף תיקון את אבן, בעל תימות ונאמה. סיו שירם ראשיכם, והנה סיו פתחי עולם, ויבוא מלך הכבוד. מי זה מלך הכבוד? השם מי זו זה גיבור, השם גיבור מלחמה. סיו שירם ראשיכם ושאו פתחי עולם ויבוא מלך הכבוד. מי הוא זה מלך הכבוד? השם צדקות ומלך הכבוד צאלה. כי זוכר כל הנשכחות, אתה הוא מעולם, ואין שכחה לפני חסי כבודיך. בעקדת יצחק לזרו היום ברחמים תזכור ברוך אתה השם זוכר הברית תקיעה Tikiyah 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 
May I begin by wishing you, your family, and Klal Yisrael, the Jewish people everywhere, a Shana Tova. May it be a good year for you and for them, a healthy year, a safe year, and hopefully a sweet year as well. For you, for us, and for all Israel. Amen. When I was chief rabbi, I used to have to go everywhere with protection officers, uh, because after all, I was a... Uh, considered to be a target and a risk and um, although it was difficult actually never to be able to go out on your own it was also very reassuring and very comforting sometimes it was also actually very amusing um, when I arrived at a venue for instance where I was going to be speaking let's say it was a big office block uh, my protection officer would go ahead and tell the receptionist um, that I was arriving. And I remember on one occasion, he went ahead to the receptionist and said, uh, Chief Rabbi. And the receptionist looked up at my protection officer and said, Good to meet you, Chief Rabbi, but tell me, who's the bloke with the beard behind you? So, uh, you know, once in a while we had a little laugh. But I used to say to them, there is a Hebrew word, which means two quite different things, and it's usually pronounced in two quite different ways. The word bitachon, sometimes pronounced bitachon. Bitachon means security, and bitachon means faith or trust. And the connection between those two meanings and that one word is, I think, very significant. The reason I say this is that um, the uh, various questionnaires and research exercises that have been done recently on the impact 
of the coronavirus pandemic on people's lives came up with an unusual f finding. Yes, of course, people missed the company. They felt cut off. They felt isolated. They felt deprived sometimes of work and sometimes of travel. All of that made an impact. But the single most significant impact of the pandemic and its consequences has been insecurity. People have felt that they don't really know what is going to happen to their health, to their work, to their business, to society, to everyone and everything around them. They don't know how long a lockdown will last or when new quarantine restrictions will be put in place or when masks will be required and when not required and what is going to happen with testing regimes. People can't plan for the future. They can't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And that is undermining their sense of security. So the question I simply want to ask these yamim noraim on these days of awe is how do we deal with insecurity? And the answer is contained, or at least the Jewish answer, is contained in that one word, bitachon, the word that means security on the one hand and faith on the other. How do you cope with insecurity? By faith. That has been the Jewish experience for almost 4,000 years. Judaism is about insecurity in a way perhaps that no other religion is, and Jews have experienced insecurity in a way no other people has. The Jewish story begins with Avram and Sarah just hearing a voice calling them away from their family and their birthplace to a land that they did not know. El Haaretz HaSheareka. God doesn't even tell them where they are going to. They are traveling to an unknown destination. They are traveling blind. The second great journey of Jewish identity when Moses leads the Israelites across the wilderness, that too is a journey into the unknown. And even that most really searing critic of the Jewish people. The prophet Jeremiah says in one of the loveliest lines in the whole of Tanakh, line, a line we say in Musaf on Rosh Hashanah, Zocharti lach chesed ne'uraich, ahavat kalulotaich, lechtech acharai b'midba be'eretz lo ziruah. Says God, I remember the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, how you were willing to follow me across an unknown, unsown land. That willingness to journey to an unknown future is of the very essence. Throughout the entire biblical era, Israel, indeed divided, of course, between uh, Yehuda and the northern tribes, was a small country or two small countries surrounded by vast empires on the Nile Delta, Egypt on the one hand, and the Tigris-Euphrates Valley on the other, and it was always insecure. Then that insecurity deepened with the destruction, especially of the Second Temple, when Jews were scattered across the world, I mean, for, uh, certainly across the Roman Empire, and uh, everywhere in a situation of hazard without rights. Following the First Crusade in 1096, Jews knew almost a thousand years of persecution in Europe. There were massacres, there were pogroms, and there were expulsions from virtually every single country in Europe, beginning in England in 1290 and culminating in Spain in 1492 and Portugal in 1497. Jews had been so secure in Spain They'd risen to prominence in a way that they had not done in any other diaspora. And yet they came crashing down in 1391 and for 101 years Jews faced persecution and eventual expulsion. I remember once in the British Library seeing a copy of the Lisbon Bible, the Lisbon Tanakh, uh, 1485, 
most magnificent thing you've ever seen, obviously commissioned by a very, very wealthy Jewish merchant, and he is there in Lisbon enjoying this incredible wealth because of the calligraphy and the illuminations and illustrations. And I thought to myself, did he have some inkling that in a mere 12 years there'd be no Jews left in Portugal? Jews lived with that insecurity. Perhaps the worst insecurity of all was the one they faced in Europe in the 19th and early 20th century because after this great movement of enlightenment and emancipation that was promising Jews open access to everything in society, out of that great moment came the worst mutation of anti-Semitism in all of history and eventually, of course, culminating in the Shoah. And that's in Europe, but what about Jews in Arab lands, they used to be flourishing. Jewish communities have been there centuries, in some cases thousands of years, in Iran, in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon. And now they're almost Judenrein, almost Jew-free. Jews had to give up countries they had known for so very long. They lived with insecurity as a dimension of their existence. The state of Israel, since it's birth 72 years ago, has lived with the almost constant threat of terror, of war, and of goodness knows what, of missiles, who knows what. Never ever been able to be relaxed. And yet Jews never ever ever lost faith. And that bitochon was their bitachon. That faith was their security. To my mind, one of the most moving broadcasts I have ever heard was the one done in May 1941 when a BBC journalist, Patrick Gordon Walker, who eventually became Foreign Secretary 20, 25 years later, did a recording at the Just Liberated extermination camp of Bergen-Belsen. And in that recording you hear the survivors of Bergen-Belsen singing. And what are they singing? Hatikva. Jews never lost hope, even at the gates of hell. And that is why, how Jews kept with insecurity in a way that no people has ever been forced to do before, and I hope never will be forced to do again. How did they carry on? Because they knew in their bones, Gam ki elach begei salmoved lo ira ra, ki madi, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Min hametza karati ka anani bemerchavia, from my confinement, from my prison, I called out to God and God answered me with spaciousness. Esai Nael Harim, may I in Yavo Ezri. They lifted their eyes up to the hills from where their help would come. That is tremendous power. Jews are the world's experts at dealing with insecurity. I remember my father, Allah HaShalom, in his 80s, had to go through five very difficult operations. Two hip replacement operations. Then when they did not take properly a further two hip replacement operations. And then a fifth. Each one sapped his strength somehow. But my dad, Allah HaShalom, Never had much of a Jewish education, but my goodness me, he had faith. All he would take with him into a to hospital was a talus and tefillin and a siddha and a little sefer tilim, a little book of psalms that I had given him many years before. And he would read that book of psalms and I would see him getting stronger. And, you know, he never told me what he really felt. But I could work it out. My father, Oliver Shalom, was saying to God, 
ריבונו של עולם, בידך אפקיד רוחי. Into your hand I entrust my spirit. If you want me up there in heaven, I'm ready. If you want me down here on earth, I'm ready for that too. You know I don't. And I just trust you. And placing his faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu was a source of indomitable strength. A day before the lockdown began, I think it was a day before the lockdown began in Britain, I was uh, doing a BBC program with Mervyn King, who had been governor of the Bank of England during the crash of 2008. We were both talking about our books. I was talking about my book, Morality, which is just about to appear in the States. And he was talking about his book called Radical Uncertainty. He and uh, an, uh, an economist, journalist, John Kay, had written a book about what you do to make good business decisions under conditions of uncertainty. And um, Mervyn, Mervyn's book argues two things. He says, number one, uh, most uncertainty has been dealt with in business and banking on the basis of mathematical models of risk. He said they are not terribly helpful because reality seldom fits the parameters of mathematical models. He said, therefore, I suggest number two, which is narrative. Understand what is going on. Of what story is this happening apart? Now, I found that interesting, but actually I think that he missed out the most important thing. Because what you need in decision-making under conditions of radical uncertainty is a steady hand, a steady eye, and a steady mind. And those are difficult to do in the eye of the storm. And the way to do them is to have bitochon, to have faith that you are going to come through this. As I have argued many times in Judaism, faith is not certainty. Faith is the courage to live with uncertainty. And therefore I would say that bitochon is the single most important thing that we need in the coming year, given the current circumstances at every level, economic, political, and medical. The verse, Isaiah says, Dershu Hashem behimatzo kra'uhu bihiyoto karov. Seek God where he is to be found, and call on him when he's close. Well, the truth is, God is always to be found, and God is always close. So Chazal understood that Isaiah wasn't saying, seek God when God is close to us. He was really saying, seek God when we are close to God. And Chazal therefore said that this line refers to the ten days, beginning with Rosh Hashanah and ending on Yom Kippur. Those are the days when we should try to absorb faith, inhale faith, take within us as much faith as we can because no other days in the year are so intense. On no other days of the year is God and faith so close. And that faith will give you and us the strength to handle all the insecurities that still lie around us. So to repeat, a Shana Tova to you all. May it be a good year for all of us. May Hashem be with us in the year ahead. And may we find our security in Him. Rabbi Lord Sachs, it's been a privilege to make this film. I was nine years old when I first began singing in the Finchley Synagogue Choir, where my father, Rabbi Avram Rosenfeld, of blessed memory, was the chazam for 30 years. He was a master of interpretation. And by listening to him week after week, I learned how important it is to try and make the music 
fit the words of the prayers. I've also been privileged to have served this congregation with my wife Natalie for over 25 years. Our children and grandchildren join us every new year from Israel. They love singing all our traditional melodies. And I hope you have too, and that you've enjoyed these highlights of the prayers and music of the holiest days of the year. I wish you gemar chatima tova. May this new year be one of happiness, of peace, and more than anything else, of good health for us all. Shana tova. It gadal ve it kadash shemay rabba amen ve alma divarachi rutei ve yamlich malchutei malchutei ve chayei chon ve yom mechom uv chayei di chol beit Yisrael ba gala uv izmane kari ve yimru yimru amen. Tush <laughs> bechata venechemata di amiran beyalma veimru veimru amen. Tit kabal et lo tan uvautan di chol beit Yisrael kodam avuhon di vishmaya. Shalom, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia